Let's get set for the final race of the day. This is a world-class senior Rotax grid. Pole position, three-time grand final champion Mark Kimber. Current British, uh, current European championship runner-up uh, John Butch on the outside of row number one. Guy Cunnington in America's Austin Lee on row two. Matthew Higgins and Jamie Perilli start row three. Oakley Pryor and James Lowther are on row four. George Holbrook and Pierce Bullock Cars on row five. Lorenzo Cordal and Harry Linden, row six. Jack Lilly and Hungary Zombor Kovacs, row seven. Morgan Porter and Canada's Lucas Pano, eight. Then Alex Duncan and Jay Lawrence on row nine. Jude Fernihau and Scotland's Tristan Rennie on row ten. Poland's David Aulajna and Jack Bate on row eleven. Austria's Christoph Sala and Archie Walker, row 12. Alex Moody and Alex De Alfie Davis, row 13. George Hunter and Scotland's Dumas Gilbert, row 14. Neil Clark and Sam Hawthorne, row 15. Row 16, Will Ellswood and Kai Hunter. Then Wales is Teddy Pritchard Williams uh, starting shotgun on the field is Scott Lapsley. Hold on to your seatbelts, ladies and gentlemen. This one's going to get crazy, I'm sure. Lights are out. We're off and racing. And Kimber leads them through turn number one. Guy Cunnington in the three carts up the inside of Sean Butcher to take second. And that is Aust No, that is Matthew Higgins up to third. Oh, and there's somebody on the grass. That was the number seven car. Archie Walker somehow saves it. This grid is... Uh, Bod Cole on our live chat is absolutely right. This grid is why British karting is number one in the world. We've got drivers. Ni hao to my friends in Chinese Taipei, the island of Taiwan. Roger Young uh, uh, is watching. And a load of the guys that race for Team Taiwan in the Rotax Grand Finals. Roger Young, a fine driver, both in karts and Porsche. a man he can drink as well. But on to the second lap we go. Mark Kimber leads. Now watch Kimber. I always say to, drive, to drivers, watch Kimber's process. His driving style is metronomic. He moves himself ever so slightly round in the seat of his cart. Look, he hardly looks as though he's moving the steering wheel. Same with Guy Cunnington. These are drivers at the very top of their game. Guy Cunnington, 2019 British champion. Uh, joint winner of the 2019 Grand Finals. Matthew Higgins, former junior British champion. Top five in the UK the last two years. Dries, Dries van Lagenbonk, donk. I was about to like you, and then, uh, <laughs> no, you're right. The FIA Karting Championship is also absolutely spectacular. But uh, this is world level as well. And here comes Butcher back into P3 at the expense of Higgins. And Jamie Perilli goes as well. Perilli up into P4. Yeah, rare little mistake there from Higgins. He clipped the inside curb in that very fast corner, just unsettled the cup, so he couldn't slow it down as quickly as he wanted to. And yeah, he lost out on a couple of positions there. So not what you want to see. Back down the hill they go. There's Butcher, though, all over that rear bumper of Guy Cunnington. And, you know, Butcher, like we said, he's always one to keep an eye on going into these finals. He did it at Kim Bolton, yep. didn't he? Out of nowhere and then came through, won yep. the final. And... We, uh, so, we, we spoke on. earlier, Morgan Porter puts in the fast lap of the race. We said tyres. Yeah. This track eats tyres. Yep. Morgan Porter, two weeks ago, found got discovered that to his cost in KZ2. He's just set the fastest lap of the race. He has learnt about saving tyres in this class. And he's had to save tyres while starting at the back of the grid for each of his heats and then coming through from 22nd to 11th in the final. He's now up, uh, sorry, 22nd to 15th in the pre-final. He is now... 14th and putting in fast lap of the race after race after race. Mark Kimber said, I look after my tyres better than anybody else and he is stretching this advantage. His lead is up to 8 tenths of a second and he's doing it and it doesn't even look like he's trying. Yeah. Alan Prost used to win Formula One World Championships went going as slow as possible. He never looked. Oh, there's a move. There's Higgins. Prost looked like the professor. He looked like he was going slow, but he was going so yeah. much quicker. Yeah. Kimber, that car doesn't look like it's going very fast, but it's over a second at the road from everybody else. Yeah, exactly. You know, it's just one of those special skills that only a couple of drivers really have. And Kimber, I definitely think, is one of those drivers who has got that skill. Like you say, it doesn't look like he's going fast, but he is absolutely flying out there as well as the rest of the field you know you can't take it away there are still some big movers all the way through that. Hawthorne who has 
just struggled all the way throughout this weekend so far with his leg injury. Certainly coming back through the field now. He's into P21, nine positions gained as well. He is another driver always that you've got to keep an eye on. up to the front. Yeah, exactly. Always one of those. Back down the inside there. Jamie Perilli just getting the move done. He's, he's battling away with James Lowther. He's in that Oakley Pryor, yeah. Harry Linden group sort of area, isn't he? Har so. Harry Linden was the penultimate driver to qualify for the pre-final on points. He started the pre-final 27th, eight, uh, five minutes in, and we're up to, he's up to eighth for the Dan Holland Racing Team. There is the Kraft Motorsport Team giving their driver Zombor Kovacs on course for a top 10 finish. The former runner-up in the Rotax Grand Finals. Where is our Canadian friend Lucas Pernot? He is who, in 12th. And Kai Hunter's gained five places, only five places, up to 27th. So, but he... He showed me the tyre mark, uh, so he's got some he's got some Scottish rubber at the back of his race suit, mm. and he is driving injured. He had a big bandage on his wrist, so he is probably just gritting his teeth, toughing it out. Why is he toughing it out? Because the championship is slipping away already at these early stages. Let's have a little look. We have ten minutes to go, and ten minutes to go. Guy Cunnington and Matthew Higgins sort of having a little conversation with each other at 75, 80 miles an hour, saying, right, we'll go and we'll catch uh, Sean Butcher in front. Butcher is up in the second place. If you can have a look at the championship standings on the screen now, shows you why consi Mr. Consistency, Sean Butcher, is having such a good season, because he leads the point standings by 21 points as things stand over Matthew Higgins with Guy Cunnington second. Mark Kimber is up at the fifth and Jamie Perilli is fourth in the point standings. Yeah, and it's, you know, still, it's chopping and changing all the time because even there across that last line, Pearson Bullock Carter has just put himself up into sixth in the championship. Alex Lee now down into seventh. Gilbert's gone down into eighth. Uh, well, he's actually joint on points Move. with... Uh, Oof. Kai Hunter and well again <laughs> Oakley Pryor keeps going for their moves on Jamie Perilli. So yeah, let's have a look at the live championship points on your screens, courtesy of Alpha Live and Motorsport-Timing.co.uk. Mark Kimber, uh, he was on course for a podium at Kim Bolton, then got into an incident. He is now fifth. But look at that. Pearson Bullock Carter, sixth position. Pearson is up into eighth now. Of all the drivers that have graduated out of juniors into seniors. Pearson is doing the best. I mean, you look at that. Harry Linden in seventh. He was uh, on the podium. Uh, no, he was top 10 in the Rotax Grand Finals in 2021. Oakley Pryor, he was top 10 of the Grand Finals in 2019. Jamie Pruddy's never raced the Grand Finals. Cunnington, Higgins, Butcher, Kimber, all experienced international champions. That might be Matt Higgins who's sitting there on the, on the screen there. Lissy uh, does a lot of great PR work. Uh, for the team and uh, yeah so Pearson Bullock Carter he's ahead of James Lowther and Zombo Kovacs and Morgan Porter in exalted company another driver that's really impressed me is Jack Lilly running in 12th place then it's Austin Lee 13th then it's Lucas Perno in 17th in, in 14th in the top 14 we have got uh, England Wales Hungary America and Canada represent the top 14 positions. If you go back to Alex Duncan from Scotland in 16th place, hello to Alex Duncan's mum. I do, I do uh, apologise for uh, calling him Stephen now and again, but I will, he, we've got nine different nationalities in the top 16 positions. Great stuff. It is good to see. Here we go then, back down the hill. Is that gap coming down between Butcher and Kimber? Nope. The answer, mm, well, I think it could be it. it is. I mean, it was over two seconds. It's now dipped below. I mean, it's, it's, I like to give the people at home hope. I like If to they give, are a Sean Butcher fan. Uh, well, if, yes, but, um, oh, there's a move that Oakley Pryor is giving his fans hope by uh, passing uh, the number 40 car of JB Brady. So, Strawberry Racing, KR Sport, Dan Holland Racing, Guy Cunnington Racing, Coles Racing, Jack's Motorsport, Kraft Motorsport, Hunter Motorsport, Sam Pollitt Racing. Nine teams in the top 12. Incredible. Yeah. Parity amongst engine. They're on different chassis. Again, the teams operate. Oh, Scott Lapsley oh. out of the race. Uh, he's down in 33rd position. Um, it, it's, you know, it, it, look, okay. Uh, we, is there a lot of overtaking going on at the moment? No. Is it, ah, 
commentator's He's curse. Great, great. Well done, Henry. That comment <laughs> aged well. <laughs> Guy Cunnington makes a move. I'm looking at that. We, there are plenty of overtakes. Uh, Oakley Pro got past Pirelli on the last lap. Zambo Kovac got past Linden. Uh, Porter got past okay. Lowther, and uh, I think uh, there was another move further back in the order as well on that Man Man was so. trying to explain that even though there's not a lot of overtaking, this is still superb racing because they're all driving at 100%, knowing that if they put a wheel on that grass, which is still wet, they're off into the barriers in a hurry. Mm. Jack Hello. Lilly got past uh, James Lowther on that last lap. Lewis Gilbert got past George Holbrook on that last lap. Tristan Rennie got past Lorenzo Cordell on that last lap. Jack Bate got past Jay Lawrence. And George Hunter got past Jude Fernahoe. No, no overtakes at all around this uh, track. Haven't no, 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 no. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> One nil to George with the commentary box. Oh, and yeah. that is a Coles Racing cart of Samuel Hawthorne coming back onto the prepared surface. Uh, but, uh, yeah, you know, this is good. Now, but Butcher, the gap is 2.3 seconds now. Yeah, it's gone up again. It's I will, six. I'll let you in on a little secret, what? ladies and gentlemen. When we were filming the strawberry racing feature uh, yesterday morning, Mark Kimber, I said, he goes to me, because I, I said that he does, Kimber's not racing full-time anymore, and at Kim Bolton, I was standing with his mechanic, Dan Tate, and we both sort of said, you could even a driver of Kimber's calibre. He hasn't been, he's not in the seat every weekend, and he was just a tenth off. He was a tenth off. And even then, in the final, he was heading towards the podium. And I said to, to Mark, I said, have you raced much since? He goes, yeah, I, I did one race. We did the European Championship, and I'll lead the European Championship. There's a move. Matthew Higgins passed Guy Cunnington up into P3, and Kimber goes, look, I'm not the best on brand new tyres, so qualifying is not my strong point. But on this track, if there's no penalties, I got this one. Yeah. I look after my tyres better than everybody else. And he goes, trust me, I got this one. No penalties, I got it. Yeah, he's, he's certainly just... And that's not, he's not an arrogant... And Mark no, is the no. least arrogant person. He is so demonstrably sort of like shy, quiet and respectful. He, is, he doesn't blow his own trumpet or anything like that. But even he's so like, I got this. You know, this, this, is my, this is my kind of track. Because yeah. it's all about going fast and saving tyres and being smooth. Mm. And when you look at Kimber, there he goes. We're not seeing him that much because this battle for third place is great. This is Higgins versus Cunnington versus Pryor, Pirelli, Bullock, Carter, Kovacs, Porter and Linden. But Kimber, it's three and a half minutes ago. We're going to catch up with Kimber and just watch and marvel. And, uh, you know, I, I've been privileged to comment, we both have, of yeah. thousands and thousands of kart racers from all over the world. Mm. And, you know, you know, when you say, who's the best driver I've ever seen? Well, I, I can't give an answer, but Kimber's in the conversation. Yeah, yeah, 100%. There are, so, there are so many names out there that could be in contention for that. But, you know, it, it, it's, it's such a fine line of who has got all of it. You know, who has yeah. got all of it. On any, different, on any given track, mm. any, any given condition, any given type of tarmac, you know. And it's not just their racing, it's how they compose themselves off track as oh, yeah. well. You yeah. know, the media side of things, how yep. they are as a personality and the team and things like that. If you've got all the, like, the perfect trifecta as mm -hmm. a driver, you'll go far. Move, potentially? No. no. Butcher, it's a, well, Sunday Sean is a lot quicker than Saturday Sean. Yes. Sunday Sean is going to salvage second place and hang on to the championship lead. But, uh, and he's pulling away from this great battle. So can Matthew Higgins put up... Have we had a Welshman on the podium yet this weekend? Uh, we did have two weeks ago. We did, but that was two weeks ago. This weekend's... Right, Matthew Higgins. Trevor Glois, the residents of Trevor Glois, are uh, standing and watching. It's all... No pressure, Matthew, but if we're going to get a Welshman on the podium in Wales, it's down to you. You've only got about seven or eight national and international champions sitting about six inches off your rear bumper trying to stop you. Two minutes to go. It is Kimber, Butcher and Higgins, your top three. This battle here on your screen is the battle for third place. It might not go Higgins' way, though, with two minutes to go. Guy Cunnington is all over the rear bumper of Higgins. Oakley Pryor is still there as well. Oakley Pryor. I mean, what a weekend he's had for the Coles Racing team. Two positions gained. He's P5 currently in this final, and he's fighting for a podium spot. And, and this is after taking last year off. We haven't yeah. seen Oakley the British Championship for a year, maybe even a year and a half. Mm. So, you know, he is back with a vengeance. Uh, looks over his shoulder. And uh, look at that. Lewis Gilbert has gained 17 places. He is up to P11. 
And there is the number 71 cart of Zombo Kovacs, the back of this lead troop. So here we go. Two, four, six, seven drivers. Kiggins, Cunnington, Pryor, Perilli, Bullock Carter, Porter and Kovacs. One minute to go, plus one lap, and we keep our eyes fixated on this battle for P3. Higgins and Cunnington all over each other here as they negotiate their way around the final corner. No positions or anything uh, gain or loss for the top 10 on that last time. Lewis Gilbert has just put himself up into the top 10 at the expense of America's Austin Lee. And again, just seeing here, Cunnington is a driver who certainly likes to wait for a move. But I've got to say, I think Higgins <laughs> is starting to plant it a little bit on the apex a little bit yep, here. We saw Matthew Higgins drive very defensively in the closing stage, the pre-final. That was 12 minutes plus a lap. This is 15 minutes. I think that cart does not like the longer races. Mm. Uh, as we come down the hill, the clock is ticking towards zero. This is compression corner. This is Devil's Elbow. And now we continue the descent down into Paddock Bend. Matthew Higgins and that Dan Holland racing number four cart is looking over his shoulder. He's gonna have neck ache. He's been looking over his shoulder oh. so much. Prior now on the attack. Could this help Higgins? But here is Mark Kimber. We, we've been watching the battle of a third, but look at that. He's hardly looks like he's turning the wheel. Yeah, I know. He's just driving that thing on rails at the moment. He looks very comfortable out there. No dramas for him in the world. Another big look over the shoulder there for Higgins just to see where Cunnington is. And I think he's got a bit of breathing space now because, like you were saying, yeah, Pryor tried the attack on Cunnington. And crucially, Perilli might try the move here on Pryor. So there are still so many elements to this race that is going to happen as we go on to the final lap now. Indeed, we do. Over 50 drivers from... 14 countries entered the senior road tax class this weekend and yet they have all had to give best to an unassuming, polite, quiet champion from Solihill near Birmingham. Mark Kimber is four seconds in front of some of the world's best and he's driving one-handed down to the finish lab. Mark Kimber remains the king in Rotax. Butcher is second and Higgins ensures the Welsh flag will be on the podium at Gladagorse. As cool as a cucumber, Mark Kimber plays himself into British Championship title contention and there, after all that, that's the moment you want to see the victor and the vanquished shaking hands. Butcher knows that, uh, he, well, compared to Saturday, Sean Butcher turned up with a vengeance on Sunday and he clear was second by ooh, a good three and a bit seconds. There is Higgins in third, Guy Cunnington in fourth, Oakley Pryor fifth. Sixth for Jamie Perilli, seventh for Pearson Bullock Carter, Morgan Porter in eighth, Zombor Kovacs ninth, Lewis Gilbert, yesterday's birthday boy, rounds out the top ten. Austin Lee and Harry Linden are next, followed by Jack Lilly and George Holbrook. We look back to the rest of the field. David Olejna is 15th from the back of the grid and with an injured wrist. Kai Hunter finishes 16th from the back of the grid. Teddy Pritchard Williams finishes 17th. And of Archie Walker, Alex Duncan, a top 20 for Tristan Rennie. Then Neil Clark, Will Ellswood, Lorenzo Cordal, Sam Hawthorne, Jay Lawrence, George Hunter, and Jack Bate. Alfie Davis, Jude Fernihau, Austria's Christoph Sala, Alex Moody, James Lowther had problems at the end. We lost Lucas Pernod from Canada on the last lap and Scott Lapsley uh, was 34th and last, the only retirement during that race. That was the last race of the day. Don't go away, ladies and gentlemen. Alex, uh, Anthony Jordan will be down in the pit lane interviewing the top three drivers at the end of this one. I shall wend my way down there as well to close out the show. Thank you, everybody, for watching. We will keep you updated as and when we can on the conditions of the injured drivers. They're both okay, just be possibly a leg injury for Luca Magni uh, and uh, Lewis Goff, I think, for some precautionary 
checks. Uh, big thank you to the marshalling team here, the Orange Army uh, here at Glanagorse. They did a fantastic job. Big thank you to the medical team. It's the second time in two weeks we've been here in North Wales. We won't visit again until 2024 at the earliest. I believe the next time you'll see the Vera Tools British Kart Championship in action will be uh, in July at Sheddington. The antithesis of if this is up and down, Sheddington is as flat as a pancake, but Sheddington breathes history. One of the UK's original kart circuits and still providing some fantastic action. Are they filming the presentation? Yes, we are, uh, Deepdale Dreamer. We are filming the presentations. They will be put on the YouTube channel with the finals. So uh, Alpha Live put the finals out on the Motorsport UK YouTube channel. And when you see the finals on YouTube, then the presentation is attached to that. Anthony Jordan is about ready. Thank you, Bod Cole, for your kind words. Always good to see you. Hopefully we'll see you back in a paddock very soon, maybe up at Warden Law, because we will obviously be going to the People's Republic of Tyne and Weir later this year for a round of the Rotax series. So we'll see you there, Bod. That's uh, your neck of the woods. And uh, we will see all of you, the viewers and the commenters on the live chat at the next round as well. But... Anthony Jordan is thinking about interviewing a winner. Um, he's thinking about it, and we'll get the interviews with you very, very shortly. Please keep your comments coming in. But in the meantime, for the final time today, we go down to the pit lane and... Anthony Jordan. Thank you very much, Henry. Yes, down here in Park Ferme and with our race winner, Mark Kimber, for the long-awaited senior Rotax final this weekend. Uh, Mark, well, what a race that was. I mean, it looked pretty well-controlled and just a, a nice Sunday drive for you. Yeah, it was quite easy in the end, just about covering uh, the top airpin at the start, covering the straight, and then uh, once I got a bit of a gap, I could chill out. Um, looked after the tyres and heat, so that comes in handy for the final. Um, didn't get the maximum points from the heats after an incident in the in the second one, which was unfortunate. But luckily today went went in the right direction and uh, yeah, pretty easy drive in the final. You certainly take a nice chunk out of the championship lead. You move up a couple of positions in that, so that looks well uh, for you for the rest of it. Um, Obviously, GYG, it's very tough on tyres. Like we were saying, we saw that two weeks ago in the KZs, you know, the tyres uh, failing. You're known for really looking after your tyres. Yeah. Do you feel like there's a lot you can uh, teach a lot of the other drivers here? Yeah, I, I mean, I've always been good on the tyres and um, I knew round here it destroys front tyres and rear tyres. So uh, just trying not to push too hard, um, change the setup to look after the tyres and the heats. And then uh, when you want to push in the final, and then you can show what you can do, really. Well, it's certainly a solid drive for you across this weekend. A lot of people say you're probably the nicest guy in the senior paddock. So, uh, you know, you come away uh, very well on track and off track as well. So, you know, a uh, great start to the, uh, the season. Comes away well at the end of two. Are we looking forward to round three? Yeah, I think I'll be at round three now after this result. Um, but, yeah, can't thank enough the, the guys at Strawberry Racing. Done a lot of work after round one. And uh, hopefully we'll be back on for, for the championship and the, and the European. Well, cheers, Mark. We'll see you on the podium a little bit later on. Well done then to uh, Mark Kimber, who finishes in P1. Let's chat to Sean. Sean, come on over. Sporting his mullet. It's a bit, you know, out of shape up there. Uh, Sean, uh, that was a tough race. Um, you were doing everything you could. You were pulling away from the race to the field. Just didn't have the legs on there. How was the cart feeling, though, for you? Yeah, to be honest, we really struggled yesterday and even quali. Um, at the end of the day, it was all about salvaging points. Come away with two seconds today, so I can't deny that oh something henry likes to call it a lot where you're a, definitely a sunday driver not a saturday driver you always seem to shine more on the sundays what do you say to that to be honest i have no idea but it's a bit of a pattern <laughs> a pattern is starting to form here isn't it but you know still a p2 championship you still maintain your lead with that p2 finish so it's still looking good are you still feeling confident for the rest of the season yeah definitely like um yeah if we've managed to turn a result around like that today I'm sure we can get better legs on the rest of them everywhere yeah. else. Yeah, Like I say, it was a tough old race, but you certainly came away with it uh, well. Were you worried about any threats of rain during the middle of that one? To be honest, I was hoping for it. <laughs> really? <laughs> but yeah, no, it was all good. 
Awesome. Well, congratulations. Well done. We'll see you on the podium a little bit later on. Thank you, mate. Awesome stuff there for Sean Butcher. Let's bring over Mr Higgins. Matthew Higgins, come on over. Ensuring there is a Welsh flag on the podium here in Wales. Uh, mate, congratulations. What a drive that was. Certainly looked like a challenge, though. You had quite a lot of company right behind you. Yeah, it was a really difficult weekend, really. We started really, really fast all the way through the... Um, all the way through testing, qualified pole, but that was the first time it felt difficult to get around in the qualifying, so we just had a real difficult uh, few heats. Pre-final, final was, yeah, probably one of the hardest third places I've ever had. I mean, again, the Welsh track here, Glenny Gore, certainly it's a favourite among some drivers. How does it rank for you in terms of circuits you've driven on? Yeah, I really enjoy its drive. It's a bit difficult to race, but I think that's the uh, way it is everywhere when everyone's so close on pace. It's just hard to make anything happen, really, without doing a stupid lunge, really. Yeah. Like you say, uh, this weekend you're, you're back with the Dan Holland racing team. Is that certainly a, a nice change for you to be back with them? Yeah, it's just nice to be home, really. Yeah, yeah. Well, you brought them a uh, podium on your first weekend back with them here at Glenny uh, Gore. So, well done. Congratulations. We'll see you on the podium a bit later on. Thank you. Cheers, mate. Excellent stuff there from Matthew Higgins. Henry. We now get underway with the podium positions and the podium presentation for the second round of the Senior Rotax Championship. Another very dramatic race and unfortunately at the end of the race, second place finisher Sean Butcher was excluded for a technical irregularity. It means that stepping onto the podium, that's two podiums in two rounds. His first two appearances as an owner driver representing Guy Cunnington Racing is the team boss himself, Guy Cunnington. So that is number three, P3, and uh, Guy, I believe, third, second in the championship at the moment as well. On to the podium. Now, we couldn't come to Wales and have not one single Welshman on the podium. Luckily, our next driver rectified that. From Trevor Gloyce, representing Dan Holland Racing, it's Matthew Higgins. Matthew's cart, like the Welsh tarmac so much, it wanted to stick permanently to it, which uh, made their task a little bit harder, but Matthew did a fantastic job. But your winner today, putting on an absolute masterclass, eventually winning by more than five seconds, he is the three-time Rotax Grand Final champion, representing Strawberry Racing, Mark Kimber. Mark's mechanic, Dan Tate, has uh, sadly had to go. Um, so Mark will take, and I believe this is if it's your first win in the British Championship, Mark, at a final in Rotax. First Rotax win in the British Championship for Mark Kimber. But ladies and gentlemen, your senior Rotax podium, everybody.